Hello, my name is Tim Shoebridge and welcome to this video, the subject of which is the Behringer Model D and oscillator tuning. Now I've said quite a few times that um, it's my impression that the Model D goes out of tune quite often, uh, more so than my other analog synthesizers. Um, and although it's always been my impression, I thought for the first time I might actually do some sort of experimentation with this synthesizer and determine factually how much is going out of tune and how often. So that's the subject of this video. It's a little experiment. Basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch this thing on. I'm going to immediately tune all three oscillators uh, so that they're perfectly in tune. And then I'm going to watch it for the next three hours. And every 15 minutes I'm going to take a reading of what the tune is on each of the oscillators, what the frequency is that they are currently set at. And after three hours, I'm going to take all of those numbers, I'm going to put them in a graph um, and show them to you so that you can see how the, uh, the oscillators are varying over time. Now, all analog synthesizers uh, drift in and out of tune. Uh, it's just part of the way that the circuitry works. Um, however, it's generally considered that after a certain amount of warm-up time, the sort of the, the frequencies that the oscillators are generating should stabilize. That is the theory. So that's the experiment I'm going to do. Uh, and rather than just do it on one single synthesizer, I thought I'd compare this to some other synthesizers and oscillators that I have around me. So I am going to compare the Behringer Model D to the Dreadbox Nix which is a two oscillator um, analog semi-modular synthesizer. I'm going to compare it to a dope for a Eurorack oscillator module. It's the A111-2. So that's a single oscillator module. I'm also going to compare um, an ancient vintage synthesizer that I've got hold of, which is uh, the Russian Polyvox two oscillator synth. And then finally, um, I've got a Yamaha CS15 2 oscillator vintage analog synthesizer as well. So I'm going to do the same three hour stint on all of those synthesizers, all of those oscillators, uh, measuring every 15 minutes the frequencies that they're emitting, um, plot them all in a graph and we'll see if the results make any sense at all. Okay so let's start with the Polyvox. Um, the Polyvox uh, is a really in not great condition. Um, the second oscillator uh, has got some faults with it. So I only ended up recording um, the frequencies on the first oscillator. I thought that was fairest uh, not to use the second oscillator because it was certainly uh, slightly sounding dodgy to me. So this is a graph of the Polyvox. So what you're basically seeing here is Along uh, the x-axis, the horizontal axis, is time, um, and this is in minutes. So you've got 15 minutes, 30, 45, 60, 90, 120, 150, 180. So that's three hours. So over those three hours, what was the frequency of that oscillator? So like I said at the beginning, um, as soon as I switch on the synth, I tune it. I tune the A to being at 440 hertz, which is this starting point here. Now I'm taking a reading once every 15 minutes, not in between. Um, so you can see here that between me initially um, tuning the oscillator and then taking my first reading here at 15 minutes, the frequency has shot right up to 443 point something hertz. Um, so I don't really know what the shape of the graph is, but it's basically gone all the way up like that. Maybe within those first few minutes it went higher, but this is the reading I have at 15 minutes. But from 15 minutes onwards, as you can see, at 30 minutes, 45 minutes, 1 hour, etc., the uh, frequency of that oscillator is then coming down again. Um, and this is a shape um, of a curve that uh, I've noticed with other synthesizers. So upon switching it on, there's an initial uh, increase, um, rapid increase in frequency, and then it drops back down. It never drops back down to where it should be, um, but it ends up flattening off here 
at 441 uh, hertz, so one hertz out, uh, and it takes 150 minutes uh, to get to that point of being stable, um, which is two and a half hours. So two and a half hours after switching it on, finally there is a sort of stable frequency coming out of the oscillator. But once we reach this point, it is very stable going forward. So for the rest of the three hours, in fact, three hours and 15 minutes that I was um, sort of like recording the frequencies, uh, it was really, really stable, but took a very, very long time to get there. Okay, so next let's look at the Dreadbox Nix, the Nix Next. Um, so two oscillators and you can see that the characteristic is fairly similar to the Polyvox. So right at the start I tune both oscillators to 440 Hertz um, and then within 15 minutes before I took the, the, the next reading um, oscillator number one in blue here had shot up quite high, in fact really quite high almost 456 Hertz whereas oscillator 2 uh, has gone up, just crept up a little bit. But then, from 15 minutes onwards, um, those readings are coming down. You see they start to come down uh, quite steeply, and then after one hour of waiting, um, they're still coming down, but at a much slower rate. Eventually, they do reach a stable frequency. The, uh, the oscillator one frequency stays really quite high um, but they both together get stable at about the same time which is around the two hour mark from two hours onwards they're very stable uh, the line is flat um, they're really not going out of tune at all from two hours onwards um, it doesn't matter that uh, the frequency here of oscillator one uh, never comes back down to 440 because obviously you just retune it and you bring it down to where you want it to be. The most important thing, the thing that I'm really looking for here, is that there comes a point when the line just stays flat um, and it's a stable frequency. So that's what we get with uh, the Nix uh, from about two hours onwards and I'm surprised it takes two hours really for the synthesizer to fully warm up and, uh, and stabilize itself. Uh, that's a long time, um, but it's good to know. All right, now let's look at the dope for the Eurorack module, the VCO. It's the A triple one two. So only one oscillator, um, and this has got a very interesting and weird uh, characteristic in terms of when you switch it on. So here you can see I started off uh, tuning it to 440 hertz, and What's happening is, now the scale isn't exactly the same scale as the others. Each scale on each of these graphs is different, just to sort of like show as much detail as possible um, in the graph. But it is dropping down. It's only dropping down to sort of 438. So not that uh, much of a reduction. But it drops down. Then after 30 minutes, it goes up. And then almost at uh, well, 45 minutes, it's then coming down again. And then at uh, just over an hour and 15 minutes, it's coming up again. So there's this strange sort of cycling of down and up and down and up. But then at around 90, or just before maybe, but it's certainly by 90 uh, minutes, one and a half hours, uh, it's stable. And it is perfectly stable after 90 minutes. It's beautifully, beautifully stable. It just stays in tune from that point on. So... Um, 90 minutes, one and a half hours to get to a stable point. Let's look at the Yamaha CS15. Um, another two oscillator synthesizer. And, and as you can see here, uh, they both start off at 440 Hz. Um, one goes up, <laughs> one goes down. Um, oscillator one, uh, the frequency rose. Oscillator two, the frequency dropped. Um, but really not by very much at all. If you look at the scale, uh, the lowest that oscillator 2 goes is 439.7 hertz. So it's literally dropped a really small amount. And similarly, oscillator 1 has gone up by just 0.3 hertz as well, up to 440.3. And 
at 30 minutes they are completely stable absolutely amazingly stable um, I carried on uh, recording frequency measurements for the next three hours and it didn't budge an inch it's incredibly stable on both of these oscillators I really just don't know how Yamaha uh, designed and built their oscillators but they're incredibly stable and they get into um, a stable state very quickly within 30 minutes unlike the other synthesizers that I've shown you um, okay so now let's look at the um, bearing up model D three oscillators and this is what the graph looks like. All three oscillators starting off at 440 hertz and immediately after powering up the synthesizer that frequency drops um, and it keeps on dropping uh, so oscillators 1 and 2 are fairly similar oscillator 3 drops uh, more than the other two. Uh, it keeps on dropping but then shallows out uh, to around say let's call it um, an hour and 15 minutes, hour and a half um, it stops dropping at around that time and then it's starting to stabilize but what you can see here is that the lines never go flat they never become perfectly stable uh, if you just look at oscillator 2 for example there's a sort of like a period of uh, 15 minutes when it's quite stable but then the re next reading is up the next reading is down then it's down then it's down then it's up then it's up then it's up oscillator one is just down a bit quite stable up a bit down a bit up 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 down and oscillator three here in green um, it's a similar picture it's stable down up down up 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 even after three hours which is at this point here 180 minutes at three hours you can see that oscillator one its frequency is dropping oscillator two is rising and so is oscillator three and I, this is really um, showing in pictures uh, what I'm experiencing with my Model D is that it's never really in tune uh, it's constantly drifting about now clearly there's a big drift at the beginning as it's warming up which you'd expect and which is what we've seen with the other synthesizers but after 90 minutes um, it's never ever really stabilizing it's it's constantly each oscillator is independently drifting about a bit um, and this explains why um, I get the feeling that I'm constantly having to tune uh, my Model D. Now I want to stress at this point that this is my synthesizer if you were to measure yours uh, you would see that there are different readings. I have got the luxury of having four uh, Behringer Model Ds. Um, you can see three of them maybe behind me here. Um, each of them uh, has its own characteristics. Um, you know, they're not all going to have an oscillator three that drops the most like this. Uh, they're all going to be uh, sort of unique, um, but they all um, exhibit the same fluctuation in frequency. Uh, and it never really gets any better. I mean, after three and a half hours, I, I decided to give up. I'm, I'm not going to sort of measure it anymore. Um, I decided on the three hour window because generally speaking, that's the sort of the window of time that I work with a synthesizer before I take a break, go to lunch, whatever it is I'm going to do and then come back and then, and then work on it again. So, you know, I really would be hoping that uh, a synthesizer within three hours is going to be stable and this Model D is not. I do not believe it is a faulty Model D um, because they're all the same. They all uh, exhibit this sort of um, drifting up and down uh, throughout the lifetime that you've got the, the, the synthesizer switched on. So that's uh, really uh, sort of like what I wanted to get to. I just want to got one more graph to show you, which is all of the oscillators from all of the synthesizers all on one graph. Because as I said earlier, the, the scales and the graphs are chosen to sort of like show the data as clearly as possible on each graph, um, but they're different to one another. This is all of the oscillators all on one graph. And you can see that uh, this one climbing up really high is oscillator one on the dreadbox nicks. 
it's it zooms away stratospherically up in up here um, and then but drops down and then stabilizes uh, from about two hours onwards um, I don't say think it, it really matters that it, it goes up so much as long as it gets stable because as I said before you can always bring it back down to where you want it to uh, in terms of the tuning dial um, you'll see here these two that hardly move at all away from 440 Hertz these are the two Yamaha CS15 oscillators they're amazing I mean considering how old that synthesizer is uh, they're absolutely amazing that they are so good um, at, at becoming stable so quickly and really not diverging very much at all from um, the you know the, the amount that I tuned them to in the first place and as you can see all of these lines are stable after a period of time after 90 minutes two hours um, that seems to be about the right time you know, if you want to work on your synthesizer get up in the morning switch them on have your breakfast do whatever you're going to do and, and wait those two hours before you come and sit down and start playing music because it's going to be less frustrating for you but with the Behringer Model D as you can see even though with the, this wide scale that I've got here um, the, the fluctuations are less pronounced when you look at them here you can certainly see that these three lines here at the bottom um, are not stable there are fluctuations and it's constant and it never stops even after three and a half hours uh, so that's it um, I don't want to sort of like draw any conclusions on why the Model D's are the way that they are um, I'm not an expert in uh, electrical engineering, I'm not an expert um, on synthesizer circuits and designs and stuff like that. I'm really just showing you uh, what I see and what I've been able to measure. And what I'm measuring here and what, what I can see in terms of these graphs really sort of like makes sense compared to my personal experiences of using these synthesizers. Um, so that's it, I hope that's been useful to you. Uh, if you've got any questions then please leave them in the comments. Thanks very much for watching.